Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, welcome to my FSX404 uh, channel. This episode is episode 2 of my 10 most extreme airports in the world according to the History Channel. Number 10 on that list is the San Diego International Airport, Lindbergh Field. According to the TV show, the reason San Diego made number 10 on the list is because it is a single strip airport in one of the busiest and most congested flight areas in the world. Also, the main approach used in San Diego is localizer runway 27 approach. This also happens to be a non-precision approach. Any approach that does not have a glide slope is a non-precision approach. Runway 9 at San Diego does have an ILS approach, however, uh, runway 27 does not. The last thing the TV show on the History Channel mentioned was that San Diego Airport has a huge building, uh, actually it's a parking structure, that is directly in the flight path of the landing airplanes. And because of that, the airplanes have to fly over it and then do a steep descent onto the runway. And if we look at the runway, the runway 27 has a displaced threshold of 1800 feet because of that parking building. Now that we know the reason why the History Channel chose this approach as one of the 10 most extreme airports in the world, let's get into the actual approach. The first thing we're going to look at is the name of the approach. The name of the approach is Localizer Runway 27. This is a big clue. This means that this approach can be done only using the localizer and a VOR. The DME, the distance measuring equipment, is not necessary for this approach, but it can be helpful. Just because we don't need it doesn't mean we can't use it. The second thing we're going to notice immediately about this approach is that this approach is a non-precision approach. Any approach that does not have a glide slope is called a non-precision approach. A localizer approach is a non-precision approach. The third thing we're going to look at on this uh, approach plate is the initial approach fix, the IAF. That is the starting point of the approach. In this case, there's only one, and that point is called Raya. If we look a little bit above, we can see that the altitude at this point should be 5,000 feet. From the point Raya, we are going to fly a heading of 198 to the Pogi VOR. So at this point, this is basic VOR tracking. However, we're going to see that 2.9 miles past Raya, there's a point called Doga. At Doga, we're going to have to be at 4,000 feet. So that means we got 2.9 miles to descend down to 4,000 feet. There's two ways of knowing when we have reached the Doga point. The first way is the VOR triangulation. This is straight out of my part 4 VOR navigation tutorial. Basic VOR triangulation. While we're on a known heading to a VOR, in this case a heading of 198 to Pogi VOR, we can use the second VOR, in this case the Mission Bay VOR, to triangulate our position. So when we are on a heading of 198 to Pogi VOR and we intercept a radial of 084 from the Mission Bay VOR, we know that we have reached the point Doga. After we pass the point Doga, the next thing we're going to intercept is the actual localizer 27. The point where we intercept the localizer while we're on the 198 uh, heading to the Pogi VOR is called Vita. Now at point Vita, we're going to be at 4,000 feet. So that means from point Doga to point Vita, we're going to maintain the altitude of 4,000 feet. Now once we are at point Vita and we have intercepted the localizer to runway 27, how do you do a descent without a glide slope? For non-precision approaches or approaches without the glide slope, we're going to do something called a step-down descent. If we look on the profile, we're going to see that at point Vita, we're going to be at 4,000 feet. At point Okane, we're going to be at 3,600 feet. At point CD, we're going to be at 2,400 feet. And at point Rebo, we're going to be at 1,800 feet. The way we're going to do this descent is that once we reach the point Vida, we're immediately going to descend down to 3,600 feet. We're going to maintain at 3,600 feet until we reach the point Okane. Once we reach the point Okane, then we can descend down to 2,400 feet until we reach the point CG. Once we reach the point CG, we can descend down to 1,800 feet until we reach the point Rebo. After we pass the point Rebo, we can descend down to our minimum descent altitude, which in this case is 640 feet. Under no circumstances can we descend below 640 feet unless we either have the runway or the runway lights in sight. How are we going to know that we are at these points? If we have the DME, then we can use that to know when we are over our checkpoints. If we look under the names, under Vita, 
it says 14.3. That means we are 14.3 miles away from the localizer. At point Ocane, we are 12.3 miles. At point CG, we're at 8.4 miles. And at point Rebo, we're at 6.5 miles. This is the easy way to do it. If we have the DME, then we can use that to know when we're over our checkpoints. Now, if we don't have a DME, the other way to do it is triangulation. So if we look above, you can see as we are on a localizer 27 approach into San Diego, we can use the Pogi VOR and radial strummit to give us our points. Of course, our final approach is going to begin at uh, Point Vida, so the next checkpoint is going to be Ocane. We are at the Point Ocane when we are on a localizer, and we have intercepted a radial of 351 from the Pogi VOR. We know we're at CG when we are on a localizer, and we have intercepted a radial of 314 from the Pogi VOR. And we know we are at Rebo once we have intercepted a radial of 304 from the Pogi VOR while we're on the localizer from runway 27. So there's two ways to do that. Technically, you don't need any distance measuring equipment for this approach, as I said in the beginning. So now that we know our altitudes and our distances where we're gonna descend, and the next thing we're gonna find out is our final approach fix. Final approach fix is important for a couple of reasons. One, this is where we put our landing gear down. The second reason we need the final approach fix is that if we look down in the left bottom corner of the approach plate, we'll have a little chart that will give us our time from our final approach fix to our missed approach point. So since we're flying an airliner and our ground approach speed will be around 150 knots, from our final approach fix from Point Rebo until we have to do a missed approach if we don't see the airport, we have 2 minutes and 5 seconds. So what's going to happen is at Rebo we're going to start a timer and if at 2 minutes and 5 seconds from that point we don't have the runway or the runway lights in sight, we're going to do a missed approach. The last thing we're going to look at is the missed approach and it's pretty straightforward here. It says missed approach, climb to 2500 via heading of 275 and then intercept a radial of 255 from Mission Bay to point Sargs and then hold at Sargs. A couple of good other things to look at are the runway length. In this case it's 7591 feet and airport elevation is 17 feet. And in this case, the touchdown zone elevation, that means that the spot on the runway where the airplane is supposed to touch down is also 17 feet. In this case, they're both the same, but that's not always the case. Most of the time, there's some, there's some difference, and I've seen it up to a 50 or 60 feet difference between the two. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind, real quick, uh, right next to the 640, now you can see categories here, are Charlie and Delta. We're probably going to fly category Delta. Our approach speed is going to be above 141 knots. If our approach speed is above 141 knots, we are at category Delta. If our approach speed is between 121 to 140 knots, we are category Charlie. So we're probably category Delta since our approach speed is 150 knots. So at category Delta, our minimum descent altitude is 640 feet and we need to have at least 2 miles visibility. All this is done for safety. Now that we did the approach briefing, let's fly the actual approach. Today we'll use the Wilco Airbus 330-200 and we'll set up the plane a few miles east of the initial approach fix, Raya. So let's move ourselves into the airplane and fly the approach. <laughs> 